As a bioethicist, does does the subject of AI come into your world? I mean, do you think about that? And what are your thoughts of where we are, where we're going? I mean, it, if we have general artificial general int- intelligence AGI, and these machines look like they have emotions, and we have data from Star Trek walking around, but they can shed tears. What is, what do you say about all that? I don't even know if it fits under bioethics. Uh, well, I think it does because you know, as you get a better and better simulacrum of our humanity, a better copy. And you can have robots. I mean, I don't know if you've seen some of the robots that they're making now yeah. that are shaped like humans and you know look just like humans. And you know, some also goes in this problematic direction of sex robots. Yeah. You know, many, many problems in these areas. But what if you could have somebody some entity like that with artificial general intelligence, and then you say, all right, we've got a, a, a kind of retirement community where there are a bunch of elderly people and nobody's really visiting them, and we send one of these entities mm. in to talk to them and to carry on conversations and engage them. Now, I think there is a problem there. I mean, you could say, well, it's just like the television. You just turn on the TV and everybody sits in front of it and veges out, or you just send in this this robot but you know, there's a way in which this robot will be even more engaging, and the person may think, you know, it's so much like a human. And you hear stories about people who, you know, want to marry their robots, and you know, all kinds of other craziness. Yeah. I think there are some bioethical lines here that pertain to how we relate to each other, to our duties to care for each other, and the question of whether substitution that relies heavily on artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence should be you know carefully deployed and only in very appropriate types of circumstances so that's one angle i mean have you talked to chat yet like with the voice interaction no not with the voice i haven't done that i've just done where you type it in it's unbelievable i mean i turn my phone off i i but it's unbelievable you can but the the upgraded versions I'm telling you, Father, it talks like we talk. Yes, it's I'll getting... show you on the in the car ride back to the hotel. I'm gonna we're gonna put yeah. it on, and I will tell it. I wish I wish I had my phone. Yeah, I, I have seen somebody else do it. I'll they say demo, I'll say hey, I, w- I can tell this thing. I'll say hey, chat, uh, Father Tad, the famous bioethicist, is in my car with me. You know, say hi to him. And he's going to talk to you like there's a guy in the back seat. It's yeah. really strange. That's amazing. So you know, I have a dishwasher that washes my dishes. Why can't I have a robot that cuts my grass? And it's because it looks like a like we could put a head and arms on it, and he yeah. can push the lawnmower, <laughs> yeah. you know. And Chat's already talking nice to me. So if I'm walking through the yard or reading my book, and as opposed to cutting the grass, why couldn't the robot walk by and say, "Hi, Mr. Gallagher. I hope you're enjoying your book." Right. You know, what I mean, like, is that wrong? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't no, know. I, it's so weird. It, it, I don't it, know. It's certainly, yeah. I mean, it's it's going to take some, I think, getting used to. But I, I think it's also very likely that we will see more and more uh, scenarios of that sort. But you know, I do. I think that the problem here is partly also a question, how much should our dependence upon this occur? You're aware, I'm sure, of what's called hallucinations in uh, AI. Yes, it's real. It's very real. Yeah, and it's actually very aggravating when you're doing research. Yes, it is. And I've yeah. done research using AI, and it's very interesting because I'll put in you know, a specific request, you know, something very scientific, maybe, you know, like, tell me uh, the effects of, of exercise and uh, ketoacidosis on glutamine levels in the blood. <laughs> All right. And then it, it gives me like five or six different statements, A, B, C, D, E. And I look at D and I say, oh, that's an interesting one. And I say, give me a citation for D where you say this about the levels of glutamine in the blood. And then it'll make something up. No surprise. It comes back and it says, oh, I made a mistake. I don't have a reference for that. Uh. And it's like, oh, now what if I had gone ahead and used that conclusion that you had given me, maybe even written it up somewhere as part of something I've written? You know, the possibility for misinformation and disinformation here is real. Uh, and so this need to, I think, verify things and go back to primary sources is really, really important. Do you know that the federal court system, I think it's federal or state, I don't know, but some courts have actually put into their rules, which is kind of a big deal that says lawyers must certify. They must actually sign a document now that says human eyes read every document filed with the court. Interesting. Because of the hallucination. 
AI is writing complaints, and I'm telling you, Father, they're making up citations. They are saying the Supreme Court ruled in 1978, boom, and they give Look a at quote, that. and it's all bogus. Yes, yes. It's a, but it looks it looks totally convincing. Now, you're a book publisher, as we are at the National Catholic Bioethics Center, so you've probably had to deal with this as well. Do you accept manuscripts that are partially or or mostly written by AI? We, it's, it's, we, it's a struggle. Yeah, we've decided no. not to. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, so like, what's partially mean? You know, yes. w word check, or, you know, word, um, oh, what's it in Microsoft Word? Spell, spell check. Spell yep. check. Well, that's sort of AI, and it ca it catches spelling errors. That's, we've right. been doing that forever. Or proofreads. Proofreading, yeah, right? But I think then also some of these things that check for plagiarism. Yes. You know, and the question here of what is plagiarism, you know, the lines start to blur. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying if when you really get into it, it's yeah. kind of like when you get into some heavy-duty bioethics. The use of it, it's a tool that needs to that people are going to use. The yes. question is, is to what extent? Yes. I mean, when does that creative process no longer theirs? And you know, every high school teacher in the world is dealing with this because the kids are handing in. Absolutely. You and know, we at the Bioethics Center, if an author submits a manuscript to us and he makes it clear in the notations as part of the manuscript, you know, that that, that we relied upon AI for a number of sections here. Uh, our tendency oh, is to decline. No, it. I wouldn't accept that. Yeah. As a publisher, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But I also have to recognize that they might be using AI to make footnotes. You know, yes. I mean, something like, I mean, I was writing something, it was actually a kind of a prospectus for, for possibly doing a dissertation. I thought, I've been thinking about doing it. And I, I worked on this thing. And then I had like, I had to make the bibliography. I had a hundred sources. And so I typed in all the books that I used and said, make me the bibliography and put it in, in Chicago manual style. And it was like, boom. Isn't that one, great? It was unbelievable. Yeah, that's you know? incredible. And I was like, real work that's a, oh, it saved yeah. me like two days. Fantastic. You know, so, yeah. So and I, mean, I can, that's, you know, that's I can like see that is, is legitimate, yes. but you yes. can't have it right in your paragraphs. Yeah. So it's just, a, it's a struggle. But I guess one day, maybe when we're really old, we'll come back here and we'll be talking about the fact that most people now, instead of buying a new car, they're buying a, a robot slave in their house yes. to do everything, but it looks and sounds like a human and their kids are interfacing with it and it's the nanny yes. and the kids develop a, a feelings it's for it. It's the George Jetson thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. going to get weird. Yeah. It's just going to, right? It's yeah, going to get I, weird. I think it is, yeah. A lot of questions awaiting on, on the horizon, but you know, this is the beauty of the church kind of dealing with bioethics, with medical ethics, with broad general ethical questions. You know, the church has the the root and the principles, the fundamentals here to speak meaningfully to our day and age. And, yeah. you know, it's a great blessing to be a Catholic and to have that kind of bedrock that we can stand on. So even in the face of many new novelties, the church is usually ahead of the curve. I point out to people when it came to cloning, the church before Dolly the Sheep was cloned had already issued a document about this. <clears throat> the recent document that came out from the Vatican on artificial intelligence was excellent. Mm. I don't know if you read it. No, I haven't. I yeah, I, I recommend it. Very well done. Uh, and so on. You know, th th there were some statements that came out during COVID from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith dealing with, you know, moral issues around abortion-derived cell lines. Again, very simple, very clear, very helpful. You know, it's a blessing to have the gift of the church uh, to assist us in what is truly a complicated world. Hey, thanks guys for checking out the Connor Gallagher Show. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, or comment, or whatever you gotta do to support it. And I appreciate that very much.